guys, it has been a hot minute, I know, but here's another monthly setup video as promised. Uh, I have to say that it has not been a good start to 2023 for me. I spent the first couple of weeks of this year incredibly sick with something, which is ridiculous because I literally had the flu at the beginning of December too. Anyways, welcome to the new year guys, and for my February setup for this Norse-themed journal, I made an artwork of Fenrir. For some reason, my printer didn't quite catch this background I put on the type, so I had to print that again, but this printable is up on my Etsy page if anyone wants to have it for their own journals. Uh, one thing that really bothered me about my January setup was that it had the purple gradient for the day headers, but my marker color didn't change. So I thought this time I would try and use a primary and secondary color and switch them out. I also made washi tape strips for this one as well using those same colors. I was thinking about leaving an extra page here before I started my February spreads, but I am afraid that I'm going to run out of pages in this journal, so I decided not to. Um, I kind of wish I did though looking back, but you know, you live and you learn. While I was trying to do my cover page, I tried to adjust this sticker, but part of the print actually flaked off. I've noticed that this is kind of a trend with this sticker paper where some of the edges of the ink almost chip. Um, this brand is called Lezerking, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's L-Z-E-R-K-I-N-G, and I probably won't buy this brand of paper again unless I was going to use some sort of laminate sheet over it to keep that from happening, because it has happened multiple times at this point. So I had to reprint the artwork with this, and I did it on normal paper this time, so I just used a glue stick to glue it in along with my little blurb about Fenrir. So Fenrir is a monstrous wolf in Norse mythology and is one of the children of Loki and Ingboda. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but she's a giantess. And fearing Fenrir's strength, the gods attempted to bind him three times. In a show of good faith that no magic was used, Tyr placed his right hand in the wolf's mouth. The final chain, Glipnir, which was forged with magic, held fast, and Fenrir bit off Tyr's hand. The wolf was gagged with a sword and bound to the boulder Thviti. Eventually, he will break free in the time of Ragnarok and devour Odin. I think the Norse mythos is really fascinating because they tend to focus a lot more on actions and consequences rather than good versus evil like modern monotheistic religions and I'm so glad that I chose this theme for my boohoo because I really get to explore and learn more about it. I also saw that Shada Campbell is doing a folk art theme for her boohoo this year and she's doing an amazing job if you guys want to check her out. She basically gives you step-by-step -step tutorials on how to do what she's doing which is really awesome for people who don't have a lot of experience drawing. I have to say that Shada is definitely sticking more towards the traditional folk art style than I am. I'm actually trying to incorporate folk art elements into my own art style rather than going full traditional folk art. Uh, so if you guys are interested in watching the speed draws for these artistic elements and hearing me ramble about them and how I'm trying to incorporate these styles together, then let me know in the comments and I might put together a speed draw video about that. Anyways, there's my February cover page, and then next I have my calendar page. This page is actually pretty boring. Um, the calendar squares here are actually six squares wide by seven squares high, since February only had five weeks to worry about. And then I have a separate space for my main focus for the month, and then notes as well. Um, I'm using this weird stamp as a straight edge because I somehow lost my ruler, but I do like the rounded edges on this note section, so happy accidents, you know what I mean? Then I'm going to use the washi tape that I made to mark the edge of this page so you can see it when you look at my closed journal, and to do that you just fold the washi tape over the edge of the page. Someone on my January setup mentioned that I should title this next spread month review and I really liked it So that's what I decided to title this page uh, Like I said in my last video, this isn't a habit tracker But a place for me to figure out where I last did something and how it's affecting my mood and my sleep 
Again, I'm not trying to do all of these things every day, but if I'm feeling really down, I can look back at this page and say, when was the last time I sketched something? Or have I been consistently drinking enough water? You can see me looking back at my January spread, uh, and I have to admit I am not the best at filling this out, but even that is a really good indication of where my headspace is at. I find that if I'm not filling this out, it meant that I was too scatterbrained to remember to do it. And since I was sick and feeling under the weather for most of January, you can actually see that because I wasn't keeping up with this page in my journal. The layout of this page is pretty simple. I have a number for every day along the side, and I did remember all of them this time, but um, I outlined the weekends with a pen in my secondary color or my primary color just so it's easier for me to navigate this page. Um, another thing that I do that you might want to switch is the placement of these sections. I tend to put my night routine and sleep on the left page and all my morning and daytime things on the right. There isn't any really solid reason for this. It's just what my brain decided makes the most sense. But that's why bullet journals are so special. I mean, you do something that makes sense to you, and that is all that matters. One thing that I forgot to do on camera was to highlight the three things that I wanted to try and do every day. Like I said, I'm not trying to do all of these things every day, but there are some things on here that I do want to try and build habits for, like studying Japanese, for example. That is something that I've always really struggled with, and the best thing you can do while learning a language is to be consistent. So I really want to get in the habit of doing some kind of lesson every day. So I'm going to highlight that column. I'll show you a picture of the finished product, but I'm not going crazy with this. The only three columns that I'm highlighting are trying to get up around the same time, studying Japanese, and then doing some strength exercises before I go to bed to try and help me sleep better. Don't try and take on too many habits at one time because that's always destined for failure. Positive habits are built slow and steady, right Ovio? Right Ovio? Sorry, my sister's cat is very desperate for attention right now. Then of course I have my weeklies. Um, this weekly setup really works for me and I don't think that I'm going to change anything anytime soon. I have uh, three columns that are eight squares wide for the days, a place for my gratitude log, a running task list, and then my main focus. For some reason I don't respond to the word goals as well as I do focus. I don't know why, but I found that I'm way more likely to do things that are in this box if it's labeled a main focus and not a main goal. Again, don't know why that is. Uh, my brain is weird sometimes, but that is okay. As long as I find something that works, I'm not complaining. And if there's something that you put in your weeklies that I don't, let me know in the comments. I love hearing about how people make their bullet journals and what works for you and what doesn't. Who knows, maybe there's something out there that I just don't know I need yet. And finally, here's the flip through. Let me know what you guys think. I would love to hear about your own journal themes, what you liked about this video, what you didn't like about the video, and what you think of the artwork. And if you want to see a speed draw of the digital drawing process for that, let me know in the comments because I do read them and if that's something you guys want to see, then I will make it happen. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful and thank you for coming along with me while I did this. I'm hoping to post another video soon, so I'll see you guys next time. Bye! <laughs>